الحمد لله الذي أنزل قرآنا عربيا وهدانا صراطا سويا والصلاة والسلام على محمد الذي بعث رسولا نبيا وعلى آله وصحبه الذين سلكوا طريقا مرضيا أما بعد Over the last few days many of us have been affected to different degrees by the heat that we are feeling. There are some who are scrolling across Amazon and Argos looking for fans and AC units in order to keep themselves cool. Others are loading their fridges with drinks so that they can keep themselves hydrated. You find individuals returning home from work and the first thing they do is remove their workwear or the uniforms that they have on and are opting for clothes which will give them some form of comfort and cool in this hot weather. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tangible examples of things that will manifest themselves in the hereafter. Sometimes we experience things in this dunya to give us a taste of what is coming in the hereafter. And this heat which radiates from the sun is one of those particular things. In a hadith the Prophet wasallam has mentioned, سَبَعَةٌ يُذِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ذِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ That there will be seven individuals to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant shade to on the day of Qiyamah. Such a day that there will be no shade except for that shade which Allah has bestowed upon a person. Meaning if Allah has granted you shade then you will, re will receive it. But there isn't a random tree that you can go and stand under or a building that you can hide under and take some shelter and some refuge from the heat of that day. My friends, we are beings that when we go to the Middle East, for example, or to countries which have hot climates, we find ourselves outside for a few minutes and immediately we rush back inside or we find an area where there's an AC. And that coolness that we receive, if a person was to quantify its value, he would be unable to do so. That he can sit for a moment and he can take a breather. On the day of Qiyamah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has highlighted Kudana Shams. That the sun will be brought closer to mankind. حَتَّى تَكُونَ عَنْهُمْ كَمِقْدَارِ مِيرُ to the extent that it is a mile above their heads and people will begin to sweat ala qadri a'malihim in another hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions they will sweat in accordance to the deeds that they had committed so there will be some who will sweat up to their ankles because of the wrongs they had perpetrated some up to their knees some up to their waist some up to their shoulders وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يُلْجِمُهُ الْعَرَقُ الْجَامًا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there will be some from among them who will be completely drowned in the wrongness that they have done, the sins that they have committed. So in and amongst all of this chaos, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grants seven individuals, seven types of people, shade and his mercy. And during the course of this khutbah, my friends, I want you to Think to yourself that what type of person am I? Do I fall within one of these seven categories? That the avenues towards Allah's mercy are vast. It is as if Allah has placed each and every single one of us on multiple different pathways and motorways, which all lead to one destination, which is the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. So which motorway are you going to take? Which type of person are you going to be? Which category are you going to fall into? Because all of them lead to the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, which we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be angrier than ever before. The first type of person the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions. He says, Al-Imam al-Adim, a just leader, 
And those who have commentated upon this particular hadith, the likes of Ibn Hajar and others, have highlighted that this does not just mean a person who is within a government position or a person who is a leader of a Muslim uh, 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 population, but rather this means every single person who is responsible of other Muslims underneath him. Maybe he is their boss in a workplace. Maybe he is the director of a masjid. Whatever that person may be, if he has individuals underneath him who are Muslim, who are under his governance, that if he is just and if he is kind towards them, then this per per person will get shade on the day of Qiyamah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna al-muqsitina ala al manabira min nur. That on the day of Qiyamah, those who were just in this world, who did well with people, looked after them, they will be sitting on pulpits made of light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them. And they will put them on high, high stations so that everybody can see them, that these are those individuals who were just and who are leading by example in the world. The Prophet ﷺ said. These were individuals who were just in their leadership, in their guidance that they gave. Just with their family members and the people who were under their governance. And anybody who they were responsible for, they did well by them. These individuals will be given a high state. The Prophet ﷺ then mentioned. Shabun, the second category. Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillah. An individual who is young but grows up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning when you are young, you have everything at your disposal. And according to the Sharia concept of what is a young person or how old is a young person, some scholars say that a person, a man is considered young or a woman is considered young up to the age of 40. So up from this time, from the time where he has become balig and he has hit adolescence and to the age of 40, let's say, a person has the ability to do whatever wrong that he wants to do. At some point in his life, when he is 21, 22, 23, he no longer needs to ask his mother or his father for money. He has his own wealth. If he wants to use that in haram deeds, he can do so. Nobody can tell him. He can do it secretly. Sooner or later, he gets a car. If he wants to drive where or towards something which is haram, he can do so. Nobody will tell him off. He can be with friends who are doing wrong and he can conceal everything that he is doing. He's at an age where he has the world in front of him. The dunya is there in front of him. And he can commit any wrong deeds that he does, he wants to do. But despite this strength that he has, he does not invest it in sin. He invests it in good deeds. He's a young person who grows up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants to pray. He wants to recite Quran. He wants to do good things. All of these things that this person is doing will grant him shade on the day of Qiyamah. There was a famous scholar of the past. His name was Abu Tayyib Al-Tabari, rahimahullah. He was a person who reached over 100 years of age, got to about 100, 120. And he was on a ship one day when it became wrecked. When they landed upon the sand or the coast of an area, everybody who was on board that ship was flat out. And the only person walking around was this individual, Abu Tayyib al-Tabari, rahimahullah. Those who were with him began asking him, you're an old man, you're older than us, yet whilst we're all flattened by this journey that we had and this shipwreck that we've undergone, you're the only one from among us who is standing up and who is walking around. How is this possible? How are you not fatigued? How are you not troubled? How are you not hurt by this calamity that has befallen us? And he said, هَذِهِ جَوَارِحِ That these are my limbs, this is my body. حَفَظْنَاهَا عَنِ الْمَعَاصِ فِي الصِّغَرِ That I looked after it from sins when I was a young person. I stopped my body from committing sins. And now that I am an older man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected it from me. شَابُ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ A young person who grows up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, رَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ A person whose heart is connected with the masjid. He's always waiting for salah. 
He always wants to be in the masjid. When he's sitting at home, he doesn't think to himself that, oh, I, I wish I could be here forever. Rather, he's thinking that when is the next adhan going to go? I want to go back into the masjid. I want to listen to the Quran being recited. I want to take the Quran with me and sit and recite the Quran. That I want to busy myself with all things that concern the masjid. Why? Because the masjid is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the most dearest to the believers. We have the, uh, the narratives of Layla and Majnoon, the two lovers who are completely crazy after one another. When one of them would go, Majnoon would go to the house of Layla and he would begin to kiss the walls of the house and embrace the walls of the house. And he would recite poetry, Amurru ala diari diari Layla, wa uqabbila dhal jidara dhal jidara, that I'm going from the house of Layla and I'm kissing this wall and I'm kissing this wall. And it's not because I love the walls, but it's because of my love for the one second diara, the one who is living within these walls. This is the one who I love. So when this comes to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person's love is far greater, that this is the house of Allah. A person who has this feeling towards the masjid, and not just sitting and praying and, and, and reciting the Qur'an. But he wants to clean the masjid from time to time. He wants to come in and help the masjid. There is a fair which is going on. That person wants to volunteer and help the masjid in this regard. There is an Eid gathering. He wants to help with the Eid gathering. All of these things which are happening in the masjid, he wants his hand in there. Why? Because it is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will give him shade on the day of Qiyamah as well. Rajulani, tahaba fillah, ijtama alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. Individuals who love each other for the sake of Allah. Not because of any worldly gain that if I love this person, he's going to give me some wealth or I will, if I give him something, then he will give me something back. There's no material gain. He loves this other person, this brother of his in Islam or this friend of his purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever he meets, he does so for the sake of Allah. And whenever they leave, they do so for the sake of Allah. My friends, Allah is, it is as if when you look at this hadith, it is as if Allah is making His mercy so easy for people. That if you want to gain Allah's mercy, you don't have to do crazy things. You don't have to really overexert yourself. It is as if Allah is saying, be a just leader. I'll give you my mercy. He's saying to an individual, grow up and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll give you mercy as well. Love other people, just like you normally do anyway, because you of, of, of the bonds and the, and the kinship you have between one another. Just loving one another, I will give you my mercy. Come to my masjid and love the masjid. I will give you my mercy. Allah is making avenues. Which motorway are you going to go to on towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rajulun da'athu imra'atun dhatu mansibin wa jamal faqal inni akhafullah. An individual who has been seduced by another. And this woman is a woman of stature, a woman of value. This is a discussion that we have right now, right, right, these days. That this woman is one of value. That she ticks all the boxes that you think, is she intelligent? She's intelligent. Does she have banter? She has banter. Is she a person who you're attracted to? She's a person you're attracted to. All of the things that you would want in a person, all of the things that you are attracted to, that pull you towards that person and allure you towards them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if such a woman was to present herself towards you and was to seduce you and to take you away from the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, away from lives of purity and chastity, that person at that particular juncture, he says, Inni akhafullah. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't, engo, I, uh, I can't uh, participate in this and I can't go on with this, uh, with, with this idea. And all of these things that I've mentioned, though the ahadith highlight male individuals, Scholars of Hadith Imam Nawawi and Ibn Hajar Asqalani rahimahumullah both have highlighted that this is also applicable to women, that you can flip it around and the same virtue goes for women as well. Meaning a person whom you're really attracted to, who ticks all the boxes, is calling you towards sin, beckoning you towards wrongdoing, and you're able to say, Inni akhafullah, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look how merciful that Allah is. That just by the mention of I fear Allah, the heat on the day of Qiyamah, which will be drowning people, that heat is taken away completely. Just by the mere utterances, Allah didn't require this person to go and to make a, a, a profound amount of tawbah, or to be prolific in the amount of salat, that he is reading or to, to do worship in abundance. All this person had to do at that time of need 
where he was being called towards sin is, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inni akhafullah. And that one statement is enough to extinguish the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. He didn't do much other than make an utterance and walk away. But it takes a person to walk away. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we're coming towards the end of these individuals. We've mentioned five. Rajulun tasaddaqa bi sadaqatin fa'akhfaha. A person who gives sadaqa, charity, but he does so secretly. Hatta la ta'lama shimaluhu ma tunfiqu yameenuhu. To the extent that his left hand doesn't know what his right hand has given in charity. It is a simile or a, or a metaphor for a person to understand. There is some symbolism here. What is being highlighted is that a person spends in such a way that he does so secretly away from the eyes of people. He doesn't do it so that he wants to boast and he wants to place the money in front of everybody that look how much I am giving in charity. Rather, his deed is completely sincere with him, between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he has this moment where he can give charity, he does so. And as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him this reward. My friends, again, it is a very simple avenue. Many of us give charity when we come here on Jumu'ah. Many of us give charity when we are in the, uh, the, the confines of our home. For us, it is so simple to give charity that we no longer need to go out with the wealth and place it in particular places. We can simply use our cards, our, our debit cards, and, and, and we can simply send the money wherever we want to send it. It is very simple for a person to do so. So a person conceals this good charity that he is doing. And again, that places you on a motorway to where? where the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And then the last one, which is perhaps the most piercing one for those who are lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rajulun Allaha khaliyan fafadat ayna. That individual who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private. Away when his wife is doing something in the kitchen or outside working or wherever she may be busy in this world. And her, his children are outside of the house. And he is just there between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nobody to show off in front of. There is nobody to, sh to, to show this pride and this arrogance in front of. Rather this person in that particular moment, it is just between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those small amount of tears which trickle down from one's eyes are enough to extinguish the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. So I conclude my khutbah by asking you, my dear, my dear brothers and sisters, that what type of person are you? Out of these seven categories, which category do you want to, be, to fall in? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to be given his shade on the day of Qiyamah the day in which there is no shade except his shade. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to act upon what I have said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me first the ability to act upon what has been said. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all the ability to act upon what has been said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardon our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and khair. Wa akhru da'wana. Assalamu alaikum. If you liked this video, please hit the like button to help us promote it. Press subscribe and the bell button to keep up to date with our future videos. You can also follow us on our social media channels, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, WhatsApp and Telegram. You can also find information on our website about events and services at the Masjid. Jazakallah care.